When creating stairs by component in Revit, you can include landings or add them later after creating stairs. Let's look at some examples. On the architecture ribbon, in the circulation panel, select stair to activate the stair by component tool. In the components panel, run is selected and the default option is to create a straight line stair segment. On the options bar, there is an automatic landing option. With this selected, landings will automatically be created between two stair segments. When I click to select the starting point of the stair, and then move the cursor to the right, you can see the stair outline and a riser counter appears. I'll move the cursor to the right. When the counter shows that I have moved far enough to create 10 risers, it also shows that there are 8 remaining before the stair extends from its base level to the top level. I'll click to pick the end of that run of stairs. Now that segment is created and I see an arrow pointing in the up direction. The risers on each end are also labeled with the number that they are in the stair order. When I move my cursor near the center of the segment, I can see an alignment line and a temporary dimension from the end of the stair segment to my cursor. I will click at 3 feet or 900 millimeters in the metric file and continue to the right. As you can see, I am creating a continuation of the stair, and I can see that the riser counter continues to change. Once I have created the remaining eight risers, I'll click to place the end of the stair. I'll click Finish Edit Mode to complete the component assembly. When I switch to a 3D view, I can see the resulting stair. I'll switch back to the Level 1 plan view and create another stair, only this time I'll deselect Automatic Landing. On the Architecture ribbon, in the Circulation panel, select Stair. Deselect Automatic Landing in the Options bar. Click to select the starting point of the stair, and then move the cursor to the right. When the counter shows that I have created 10 risers, I'll click to pick the end of that run of stairs. To start the next segment, I will click 3 feet, or 900 millimeters in the metric file, to the right. Once I have created the remaining 8 risers, I'll click to place the end of the stair. I'll click Finish Edit Mode to complete the stair. This time, a warning message appears stating that the stair components are not continuously connected, and that this may cause incorrect representation and annotation. Click anywhere in the drawing area to dismiss the warning. Now, select the stair we just created with the gap. In the contextual ribbon, select Edit Stairs. We are now back in Edit Mode. In the Components panel, select Landing. The default option in the Draw Gallery is Pick Two Runs, so move into the Drawing Area and select each run. When the second run is selected, the landing is created between the stair segments. Choose Finish Edit Mode. I'll switch to a 3D view. The two stairs are identical. Depending on the situation, you can use either method to create landings. However, there are some stipulations on using the Landing tool on the Components panel. First, the two runs must be created in the same stair assembly editing session. Then, either the start or end level of one run must be the same as either the start or end level of the second run. Keep that in mind if you choose to create landings after the stair runs. The other method is to sketch the landings if runs have already been placed. The easiest method is to have Revit automatically create landings if the design allows. I'll switch back to the level 1 plan view and create another stair. I'll start the Stair by Component tool, check the Automatic Landing option, click to pick the starting point for the stair, and move the cursor to the right until I've created 10 risers. Then I'll click to end that run of stairs. Again, when I move the cursor to the right, I can see an alignment line when I'm lined up with the center or an edge. I will align my cursor with the top edge of the stair and move 3 feet or 900 millimeters in the metric file to the right. I'll click at the point to start the next run of stairs, and then move the cursor up until I see that I've created the remaining risers. Then I'll click to end that run. I'll click Finish Edit Mode, and then switch to the default 3D view to see the resulting stair. I'll do that again, but this time I'll create a U-shaped stair. I'll switch back to the Level 1 plan view, start the Stair by Component tool again, and create a run of stairs consisting of 10 risers. Then I'll move the cursor up, aligned with the last riser, until I'm at a location at least as far away from the first run of stairs as the width of the stair. 
This can take a bit of advanced planning when working in tight spaces, like stair towers. You may need to place some reference lines or reference planes before you start to create U-shaped stairs. I'll click to start the next run of stairs, and then move the cursor to the left until I've created the remaining eight risers, and then click to complete that run. If needed, I can select the top run and then either drag it to reduce the space between the two runs, or modify any of the temporary dimensions. Once I'm satisfied, I'll click Finish Edit Mode to complete the stair. Again, I'll switch to the default 3D view and orbit around so you can see the resulting stair. As you can see, there are many options in creating landing components. There are also many layouts that can be created with the Straight Run tool and Stair by Components.